Hello, everyone. Picture yourself in 1995. Uh, we are looking at IPv4, running out of space. Everybody's panicking. We don't know what we're going to do. This is what we're going to talk about today. So stick with us. We'll be right back. Hey, John, how you doing today? Good. Hey, uh, yeah, let's talk about IPv6. Uh, I, if it IPv6. was a kid, it'd be getting married by now, I think. That's right. I was going to say, I was going to make the joke that uh, if you bought a cat, if you got a cat when IPv6 was uh, yes. was launched, the cat would be dead. But uh, apparently it's not inclusive for cat lovers to, for me hey. to make that joke now that I just did anyway. So, Hey, I'm a dog lover. Cooper's uh, hanging out in his kennel over there because he'd be in the pest today. I can hear my two upstairs uh, that are whining at the door, so my wife must be around somewhere. Yeah. But IPv6, why are we still talking about this? Uh, we're still talking about it because uh, what we're going to talk about today is Azure AD is going to start natively accepting authentication requests over IPv6 traffic. Why is there any IPv6 traffic? Uh Today, there hasn't been, uh, but now, uh, starting later this month and into next month, we're going to be enabling IPv6 support across the board in Azure AD. So, uh, good times because uh, IPv4 address space, as we know, has basically been depleted at this point. So, it's beg, borrow, or steal to get a new address. Actually, I went to, uh, last conference I was at, uh, we had a conversation, it was a networking thing. And um, I asked somebody if they were uh, adopting IPv6 or if, if they were doing anything with it. And they said, why? Because everything they do, whether it's in the cloud, in, in, in Azure or AWS or any other cloud, uh, is all private IP spaces. They said, we'll never run out of that because we reuse the same addresses or, or classes uh, across our environments. And like, there's no point for us to do that. So your private spaces, yes, but with our new work from everywhere, work from anywhere, remote worker uh, space, and those great things that we have mobile devices, um, our insert favorite brand name of phone here, yeah. a lot of those now support IPv6 and those mobile operators are using that space for those devices. So we need to really start thinking about that and using those public uh, public IPs to our advantage. Okay, no, that makes sense. I, you know what? I had not thought about the proliferation of mispronounced that, but uh, the growth of the uh, mobile market, especially uh, IoT, is also still growing, mm -hmm. uh, and those all require IP addresses. So I, I had not thought of that. So, but uh, you're correct. It's uh, it's going to eat up into the – oh, the pool is depleted, but the ISPs are sitting on a lot, a stack of them that they're slowly uh, renting out. My ISPs actually provide um, a IPv6 address and a block for personal use. So uh, the, the home lab where I do my testing in uh, has IPv6 support enabled. And so I can actually see IPv6 traffic coming from my home network. Okay. Uh, one thing about IPv6, you mentioned uh, Azure AD. I seem to recall getting an email about actions I needed to take. Was that in yes. the same relation? Yes. So uh, about mid-February timeframe. Uh, we yep. sent an email, and I think I have it up on my screen here, if we can show that. Um, we sent an email talking about IPv6 coming to Azure AD, and we want to make sure that customers add your publicly available IPv6 ranges okay. uh, to your named locations before we flip the switch to start turning this on. Um, okay. You'll have, you'll have to be you'll have to tell me what is a that that location that trusted yep. location what is that about and where does that come from? Yep. So we have this concept of named locations in Azure Active Directory, uh, 
Okay. Those named locations get used in several areas. So you can add a named location to a conditional access policy and either allow or block traffic to uh, fr to or from that endpoint. And then it also gets used to enhance detections in tools like identity protection. When traffic is coming from a known trusted location that's defined by that, that network location, it can lower the risk score associated with that sign-in. And so I can show you exactly where we would go and configure that and where that's set up. Okay. So this is my test tenant and we'll go into security and we can go to named locations. Okay. Do you want to maximize this? Yep. Let me maximize that. Sorry about that. No worries. So we're in named locations here and this is my trusted location for IPv6 that I've been testing with. Okay. So that is if like if you, if you're a company and you have branch offices or uh, a warehouse somewhere where somebody's connecting to your main office for like inventory control or anything like that but you you know that that place is safe so you name it and define it as a trusted location. Yeah, you can define locations and not mark them trusted. Okay. So it, I know this IP address or I can say, I know this IP address and I want to add a level of confidence to it by marking it trusted. So that would okay. be, yes, Contoso's headquarters. They know that every bit of traffic flowing out from this IP address is one of their headquarters public IP addresses. Okay. And they want to mark that as such. And then what's great is now I can combine this with a policy in conditional access and say, for this policy, I'm testing with a specific user. Yep. Any cloud application that falls in the condition of any network location except my trusted networks. So this is a very restrictive policy that says anyone accessing any cloud app from any network is going to be blocked unless, unless that network location is marked as trusted. Okay. So that that's something you would set for your like your 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 most critical system. I only I only ever want my accounting people to access the accounting application from Contoso's headquarters network location. Perfect. And if okay. they're coming from outside of that, they're going to be blocked. So the one thing to make sure of when you're doing that is to exclude anything like your emergency access accounts, your break glass accounts to get back in. Because if you lock yourself out, that is a really painful process in order to get on the phone with support, prove that you are that you have access to that tenant and get them to help you get back in. It is a very painful process. You do not want to go through that. That is the worst thing to, to paint yourself into a corner. Yes. Do not ever try to paint yourself into this corner. I think I'd done that once uh, on stage doing a, uh, a demo. Yep. And I and I blocked the, the account that I was using for my demo. I did it one time and called the PG and they were like, don't you have any other accounts that can get in? And I managed to find one account that I was able to get in with and fix the policy and change it and was able to get myself back into my, my test environment. It was not a fun day. Okay. I got laughed at for a little bit from, from the PMs. All right. So now, now that we have this policy, um, how does somebody like make sure that it's working? Yeah. All right, so we can go to our sign-in logs and see that traffic flowing in from a network location. Okay. So if I go back in, I can go to my sign-in logs. Yes. In Azure AD. And I can look for specific traffic patterns. Is this something while we're waiting for this to refresh, is this something that Sentinel also kind of... Uh, pill, uh, 
pitches yes, in or, or could, gets the data from? Yes. If you're exporting your logs to Log Analytics or Sentinel, you could search through and query those logs for traffic patterns. So we'll look for IP addresses that include, and this is really easy for IPv6 traffic, they all have colons in them. So if I just look for IP addresses contain a colon, this will now filter my logs. And of course, today while I'm doing a demo, uh, the sign in logs are going to go a little slow. All right, there we go. So I can look and I can see, yes, I have traffic mm -hmm. flowing through this IPv6 endpoint. And if I click on one of these entries, I can go to conditional access. I can see my test policy. Okay. And under location, it says not matched, which is what I expect because this is a trusted location and has been excluded. And there's the public IP that was seen coming from my device. And so it allowed that traffic to flow. Okay. If I came from a network location that was not part of that, I would get a green matched and that traffic would have been blocked. And so I don't have an IPv6 version of that, but I can show you a IPv4 block. from here and i had matched on this traffic and because yep. that traffic was matched it blocked okay uh, that's and very cool very cool and it's it's like we sent the email and i seem to recall when you showed it on screen that this has to be done before march 31st so that's coming up Yes. So, so what's uh, going to happen on April 1st? So on April 1st, on April Fool's Day, uh, or thereabouts, you'll start seeing IPv6 traffic show up in your sign-in logs. So we're asking customers to go in and update those named locations before that point in time. We want you to okay. do that because if you have a restrictive policy set that says block anything but my trusted network locations, after we turn on IPv6 traffic, you may end up with a block on your users. So okay. we want your users to continue to be able to access their resources. We don't want you to have a flood of tickets come in for IPv6 traffic and your users being blocked after they've been able to access resources without any problem. So we have an article that we've published here that yep. talks about IPv6 support in Azure Active Directory. Uh, okay. You can get there through aka.ms slash Azure AD IPv6. Okay. I'll and, put that in the show notes below. All right. And this goes over the basics of what's changing, when it's going to happen, what we want customers to do, and then how they can actually test like I just showed in their own environments. Okay. So you can create what's called an NRPT rule and point that to other DNS servers so that yep. you will get IPv6 endpoints for login.microsoftonline.com. Okay. Once we turn on IPv IPv6 support, we want everyone to remove those NRPT rules because if we update DNS settings on our side, those older servers may not see that yeah. um, as we roll through servers. So we wanna make sure that everybody has the most up-to-date information. So you can go through, you can test here. And this actually talks about how to find those addresses in your sign-in logs. Mm -hmm. And if you're using log analytics, a query that you can use in log analytics to uh, look for those IPv6 addresses. Yeah, and we're doing this at the end of, uh, or first of April. Um, so we are getting a little, we're cutting it a little close and hopefully this will be, uh, published, uh, hopefully a couple of weeks before that, uh, we get to that uh, deadline. Um, but that has nothing to do with like virtual network, uh, in, uh, or your workload within Azure starting to use IPv6, correct? Nope. Nope. This is, this is separate from your Azure virtual networks. 
Okay. So this is specifically Azure AD endpoints. Um, yeah. This is authentic the authentication stack. This is making sure that your users can get into the resources that are protected with Azure AD. Okay, and I and so I mean I guess we ha we'll have to have another um, episode where we cover uh, IPv6 within virtual network and within your workloads. But this is strictly for authentication. I think your buddy Michael Bender might be uh, might be equipped to uh, have a conversation about that networking side of things. That's the point. That's the plan. Um, anything else that uh, we need to really kind of grasp at with uh, in re regards to IPv6? No, uh, we just really want people to uh, take this seriously and take a look, go do an audit of your network locations, make sure you update them, keep them up to date, mark things as trusted as needed, and uh, check your conditional access rules, and make sure that you've got your policies set up accordingly. Something that just popped into my head, uh, in this day and age with the amount of uh, people that we have working from home and working remotely, if you said that your ISP is giving you IPv6, that means that there's probably any number of IPv6 uh, or uh, ISPs that are providing IPv6 uh, IP address for their endpoints. Yes. So you may already be in a situation where a significant amount of your staff is coming in over that those addresses. So they may currently be they may currently have an IPv6 address, but Azure AD is not seeing that today. So Azure AD will see it starting at the end of the month. On the end of the month. But so if we haven't updated that, at that point, all these people. So you can use those queries that you showed earlier to yes. identify whether or not you already have a lot of staff that are coming over IPv6 and then make the change. Yes, if need be, you can then go in and add locations as you as you, as you you require. Okay, perfect. Well, John, this was uh, short and sweet, but... Uh, super um, impactful, hopefully. Uh, let's get everybody out there to go and update your, your trusted or your named location with your IPv6 uh, info. And uh, so I thank you very much for taking the time and to tell us all about this. And, uh, and you, you're, we're going to put some information about the, all your Azure AD documentation and networking uh, into the show notes aka.ms slash Azure AD IPv6. And uh, if some, somebody wants to uh, follow you on, oh, I see it right there on the screen, uh, at Buckeye JFlow. Buckeye uh, and, JFlow on Twitter and Instagram if you want to see some dog pictures. Oh, that's right. Doggy, we can never have too many doggy pictures. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, I am uh, Pierre Romain or at Wired Connect. And uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, view this content again. Make sure to go update your information for Azure AD, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. Thanks. Bye.